Hello everyone, so in this video we are continuing with the MRP processing. So in this video we'll look into our last model which is around uh, POQ, right? Uh, periodic order quantity. So as we know that we have uh, in the previous two videos done with the level one planning for the MRP. Now we are at level two. So based on what we explained earlier in the previous videos, at level two the demand will be determined based on the components of the sub-assemblies. And remember, the demand of sub-assemblies or components is driven based on the planned order release, right? For example, in this case, for the leg assembly, we knew that, uh, that there's a requirement of 120 leg assemblies on week, week four, yeah. So in order to fulfill that requirement, the manufacturing of these leg assemblies starts one week earlier, right? So which was uh, week three, because due to this lead time. However, in order to make these leg assemblies, we need short rails, long rails, and legs. I need these, uh, the, the children to leg assemblies uh, within this week, right? So the demand for level two items will be determined based on the planned order release date and the planned order release quantities which are we already determined at level one, right? Because the level one item are the parent to the level two items. So in a very simple way, we need level two items to manufacture level one items. So the quantities will be determined based on level one, right? The most common mistake I have seen when it comes to assessment, that's when it comes to level two, students still end up using the MRP data to determine the gross requirements. When you're level two, use the plan or release data from level one for the parent item right when you're at level four use uh, plant or release data from the parent item from level three and so on right so let's start by determining the cross requirements here so again we are looking for short rails in this case right uh, beginning inventory is 150 and in this case we're using eoq rule so 500 units and lead time is one week. So again, EOQ, EPQ, they work in the same manner, right? In EPQ, we are doing the production in-house because this is the economic production quantity. However, EOQ, when you are receiving these items from your vendors, right? But however, from the calculation view viewpoint, the EOQ will work in the same fashion when it comes to generating the uh, MRP table well uh, as we did in in the epq model right okay so i have no gross requirement in week zero right uh, because uh, we don't have any planned or release for the leg assembly similarly no plan order release uh, in week two however in week three we have 120 as planned order release so we already know that one one leg assembly needs two short rails so 120 will need 240 short rails right so make sure you determine right quantities by looking at uh, how many uh, units of a child are required to make one parent right so now based on uh, this information if we fill the cross requirements we know that 150 here for week four so we need 300 short rails, uh, 100 in week five and 200 short rails, right? So get the gross requirements from the planned order release. So make sure you take a note of this. So now from here, this is same as, as I said earlier for, for EO, EEPQ rule. So I'm just gonna walk through this quickly. Uh, so for week one, no gross requirement. So the plan on, on hand inventory for week one is going to be same as what we have from the previous week which is 150 units because we are not satisfying any demand in this case uh, and we are good because we have uh, 100 units for safety stock so we are we have 150 on hand so we are satisfying that criteria too again no gross requirement right so for week three uh, we have uh, inventories coming from the previous week so previous week inventories are 150 right planned on hand from the previous week minus the gross requirement so which is 240 units i have nothing uh, as scheduled receipt at the moment nothing as planned receipt right so that's going to give me minus 90 right 
so which means we need 90 units more to satisfy the demand and at the same time you must remember you have you need to have 100 units of safety stock so in total I need 190 units so 90 to satisfy the the gross requirements and 100 units to satisfy this constraint of safety stock right so that's why your net requirement is 190 but we know that we cannot order 190 units and we're going to order 500 units from a supplier so that's why the plant order receipt is 500 here and as there's a one week lead time so your plant order release date will be a week ahead right so we need to release an order in week two so that we can receive 500 units in week three in order to satisfy the gross requirements so pretty straightforward same as what we did in epq so please give it a go and fill the rest of the table compare your answer and if you have any questions uh, please feel free to ask so from here let's look into the next one so which is long rails right uh, so again long rail is a child uh, to leg assembly right and we are at level two so the gross requirements at level two will be derived from the plant order release right because in order to make this table we need leg assembly and from the in order to make the leg assembly we need these components right so for for level two items we will use level one uh, cross requirement uh, sorry level one plant order release to determine the cross requirements uh, so again we need two long rails to make one leg assembly so that's why we are multiplying these plant or release quantities by two here right to get the correct uh, gross requirements okay so the other things we have the beginning inventory is 80 and in this case we're going to use a large size rule which is POQ periodic order quantity so we'll be ordering every two weeks but from week to week your quantity may vary right the so quantities are not fixed but the ordering period is fixed here and we should keep at least 60 units of safety stock okay so let's look into this so for week one and two there's no gross requirement so for week one we have uh, the plant on hand or the beginning inventory 80 so which is coming from the previous period gross requirement is zero no scheduled receipt no plant order release so 80 units right so that's why you have 80 here similarly in week two no gross requirement that's still going to say the same so here's the tricky part when it comes to POQ so you must remember in POQ because the uh, the value is two weeks so if I place an order let's say on week two so if I place an order on week two so the next order will be placed on week four part of the reason because we're using POQ model we cannot place order in between if I have POQ as three if I place an order on week two, the next order can be placed on week five and so on, right? So we'll start by calculating week three plant on hand. So I have plant on hand from week two, which is 80 units. And then gross requirement is 240, right? Then there's no scheduled receipt at the moment and no plant or lease to start with, right? This is going to give me minus 160 right so i need to place an order on week three uh, in order to uh, satisfy the gross requirements and to satisfy the safety stock level right so we should be placing an order here but another consideration i need to think about is if i place an order here i cannot place an order in week three the next order will be placed at start of week four so which means whenever you're below safety stock you need more uh, you need to place an order always consider the gross requirements for the period which is equals to poq value right so in this case we're going to calculate the gross requirement for two periods period two is 240 and the gross requirement for period three is 300 so that gives me total gross requirement of 540 so I have updated my total gross requirement, so which means we need to redo this calculation, right? The gross requirement for next two weeks is 540 units. So based on this information, we need 460 units more, right? For next two weeks. 
and at the same time we need 60 units for the safety stock right so that's why in total I need to order 520 units so that's why your net requirement here is 520 so based on this I will need uh, 300 units to satisfy the demand in week uh, week 4 and uh, then 160 units for week 2 and 60 units to keep as safety star so based on this information you will have a planned uh, order receipt for week 2 of 520 units and there's a two weeks of lead time we need to release this planned order two weeks ahead right the planned on hand inventory don't keep this as negative number so now I want to go back and apply the form login so for week 3 the plan on hand after deciding on net requirement and the planned order receipt would be uh, the plan on hand from the previous week 80 minus 240 is the demand uh, for week 3 no schedule receipt but we have a planned order release now of 520 units so that will give me uh, 360 uh, on hand inventory for week 3 then next week we need 300 units to satisfy the demand right so which kind of fulfills that requirement too it's important to consider uh, the total gross requirement for a period that is equals to POQ value but only in the case when you cannot satisfy the demand you need to place an order right so POQ is a bit difficult model to get around right so make sure you work through Excel sheet apply it manually do the manual calculations so that you know where you're making the mistake before you attempt uh, the assignment or do any other assessment right uh, so again if you have any questions reach me out drop me an email and I'll be happy to help thank you very much